Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the joint EAL and NET webinar introducing the new Level 3 Electrotechnical in Dwellings qualification. So a quick run through of the format of the webinar. Uh, please type any questions you have in the question and answer area in Zoom. And we have the question and answer section at the end. All attendees will be muted during the presentation and the session will be recorded for distribution later on. So please share with your colleagues. The aim of the presentation is to help you understand the domestic electrician apprenticeship, um, the EAL level three electrotechnical in dwellings qualification, and the endpoint assessment for this standard, the EPA, which will be covered uh, by Bill Lockyer from NET. So to introduce the speakers today, you have uh, myself, Kevin Sparrow, product specialist at EAL, and special guest speaker, Bill Lockyer, who many of you will probably know, who is quality and verification manager from NET. So first of all, to give a summary of the qualification as standard, um, this new qualification is only for apprentices on the domestic electrician apprenticeship. So this is applicable currently only to the domestic electrician apprentices in England. So importantly, non-apprentices are not permitted to undertake this qualification. So please be careful when registering learners. All details of the apprenticeship can be viewed on the link provided, so I do recommend you become familiar with the standard and its components. As you are aware, domestic electricians work in dwellings, including homes or individual units, which can encompass care homes, apartment buildings and student accommodation. They do not work in communal areas and buildings or on commercial or industrial building sites. Another demarcation from the existing uh, installation and maintenance electrician apprenticeship is that these apprentices and the qualification will cover single phase installations only. To undertake the EPA, the apprentice will need to achieve English and maths at level two and the mandated electrotechnical in dwellings qualification. The EPA and the level two English and maths are outside the dwellings qualification and our additional components as part of the apprenticeship. Now, just to give a comparison to the existing apprenticeship qualification you're delivering, I'll, I've just put together a small table to enable you to quickly compare some key areas. The new dwellings qualification has 650 guided learning hours, which is 93 hours less than the current apprenticeship qualification. The dwellings electrician apprentice would typically take three years to get to the point where they can undertake the EPA. Maximum funding for this apprenticeship is £15,000. Now, delivery staff uh, listening today, I'm sure you'll be keen to understand what is actually in the qualification and what are some of the key areas and differences uh, to what you're currently delivering. You'll be pleased to know that the content has been created with employers, technical experts, and through work with other awarding organisations. So I'm just going to briefly give you a whistle-stop tour of the units. So firstly, looking at the knowledge and understanding theory units, first, you'll see that these units, bar one, do not have understand in front of the unit title. Uh, this is intentional but they are knowledge and understanding theory units. Uh, within EAL coding, EDK just means electricians dwellings knowledge. So it's a quick way to identify uh, what the unit is about. So looking at unit one, this unit is almost identical to the current health and safety unit within the level three electrotechnical qualification. It still has the same college-based practical assessments, which include safe isolation, equipment safety, and access equipment. Unit three is very similar to the current unit three in the 7345 level three electrotechnical qualification as well. It covers 
uh, organising and overseeing, but the emphasis is for electrical work in dwellings. There is a slight difference to content to what you would have seen in older qualifications, just as the content has been brought up to date. Unit four uh, covers all the installation and technology requirements and also connection and termination of wiring systems, older wiring systems and practices commonly encountered in dwellings. So it's a very comprehensive unit. Uh, within unit four, the learners will really start to explore BS 7671, building regulations, approved documents, and other standards and industry guidance. Unit six covers inspection and testing in dwellings and is very similar to units you will already be delivering, but it has additional content in relation to periodic inspection and testing. This is an area employers wanted to include. The unit is assessed by an on-screen exam and centre-based practical. We have provided all rig specifications, which may be adapted from your existing centre rigs. Unit seven covers fault diagnosis and rectification. Again, very similar to existing units you will be delivering, uh, but it is tailored uh, specifically for dwellings. And there is a dwelling specific single phase rig, which again can be adapted from existing rigs you will likely have. The unit is assessed by an on-screen exam and practical centre-based assessment. Unit eight covers science and principles and is a very comprehensive unit and has very similar content to the level three electrotechnical qualification or 7345. The content in the unit is as expected, but there is no content on motors or machines, but it still covers in-depth AC theory. So it provides a good strong basis for progression onto further qualifications. It is assessed by an on-screen exam, which is graded on the first attempt only and also a centre marked written paper, which is also graded on the first attempt only, past merit or distinction. Any resits are subject to a pass grade maximum. Um, so it's the same as the current level three electrotechnical qualification or 7345. Uh, the grades from the two assessments will appear on the learner certificate but will not form part of the grading for the qualification or apprenticeship. Um, NETK 3 18 2 uh, that's the 18th edition wiring regulations unit to amendment two. So it has the same content as the current Electrotech qualification and CPD award. So learners will undertake a 60 question open book multiple choice exam. Um, so I'm only going to give a quick overview of the performance units uh, in that they reflect the content in the theory units, but obviously relate to the application and knowledge and understanding of the, you know, the skills on site. One key difference to the current Electrotech 7345 qualification is that there is no optional units for installation or maintenance. All learners will complete the same performance units. Um, this slide covers the assessment of the theory units. I won't dwell too long on this slide, but it just gives an overview of what I've already mentioned in relation to the assessments and the qualification. So they will be very familiar to what you're already delivering, but have been tailored to single phase dwelling type installations. Where possible, we've given emphasis on a new and emerging technologies such as battery storage, LED lighting, how battery storage and solar systems interact, and also heat pumps. Learners will reference building regulations, approved documents, and requirements for fire alarms in dwellings in the centre-based theory assignments. The assessments follow an assessment strategy developed by awarding organisations and the apprenticeship employer group. And we have made the assessments very manageable and very valid to the qualification. All units and centre assessment materials for the qualification can be downloaded from the uh, EAL online services. Um, assessments of the performance uh, units is the same as the current electrotechnical qualification, requiring evidence from the workplace and assessment by a competent and qualified assessor. So if you're currently delivering the existing electrotechnical apprenticeship qualification, it will have similar requirements. The qualification will require observation in the workplace by a, uh, an assessor, 
at least one of the direct observations will need to be a physical face-to-face -face between the assessor and the learner. Now, just to give you an overview of the look and feel of the new EAL materials, we are currently going through a rebranding process, and this is an overview, overview of how the knowledge units look and how they're laid out in a simple scheme of work format. So um, you will see that running through our qualifications as, you, as we're updating them. This slide shows example centre assessments for inspection and testing on the left there and fault finding. The middle image is one of the drawings from the centre marked assessments where the learners will be utilising electrical drawings to determine cable sizes and component positioning, numbers of sockets and switches and fire detection devices. The right hand image just shows an extract of an interactive Word doc document which can be used for the portfolio of evidence. Um, they are locked so cannot be edited apart from specific areas where the learner can input their evidence for their portfolio. Also, the document can be stored in a, um, an MS Microsoft Teams channel. And finally, uh, I just wanted to relay some other qualifications which may be of interest. We have two uh, CPD type awards for the fire industry, which can also be used by electricians. We have the Level three award in the commissioning handover, handover and servicing of fire detection and, and alarm systems to BS5839 part one. Uh, this is, uh, covers non-domestic fire alarms. It is assessed by centre marked written paper and centre practical assessments. And we provide all the information and the rigs and the marking schemes. And just launched, which I think will be an excellent qualification for existing domestic electricians which is the level three award in the requirements for fire detection and alarm systems in dwellings. This is a CPD award focusing on BS5839 part six, approved document B, and also focusing on the interaction between part one and part six. This will really help, fire, uh, help with fire safety. It is assessed by an online exam only. And finally, in development for this year, we have the Level 3 Award in Electrical Energy Storage Systems, which is essentially battery storage for dwellings, so learners will understand the architectures, the benefits of using them in relation to solar PV and the safety and technical requirements of these systems, and it will follow the IET code of practice. There are some developments within the industry which have slightly delayed the launch of this qualification, so we're making sure it's right up to date. So thank you for listening to me. I'm now going to hand over to Bill Lockyer from NET. And if you do think of any questions, please pop them in the question and answer section in Zoom. Thank you very much. Over to you, Bill. Thank you very much, Kevin. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Bill Lockyer and I'm the Quality and Verification Manager for NET. Uh, what we'll be discussing today really is the uh, domestic electrician standard, which has a number. ST1017, and you can actually find the full details of this one on the uh, Institute for Apprentices and Technical Education on their website. Next slide, please. So the domestic electrician, as Kevin has already mentioned, and it's really important that this is designed at this point in time for apprentices only. Uh, there is some development work undergoing at the moment, uh, and it's hoped that in the near future there will also be an experienced worker route. From NET's perspective, we check the gateways and refer incomplete or incorrect submissions back to the training provider. So it's really important that as a training provider that you get all the details of the, the status of your apprentice and everything correct before you apply for uh, a booking. Next slide, please. One of the questions that's often asked is that why is NET the endpoint assessment organization? Well, we are regulated and we provide a, a consistent approach for the electrotechnical industry. The domestic electrician employer group requested a modified version of the AM2 to form the apprenticeship EPA. And the AM2 has been around since the 1980s where uh, NET actually looked after it 
as a from a statute that was put in by government after the engineering and other associated training boards were actually dissolved. So we've been looking after the AM2 for a large number of years. NET is not only the endpoint assessment organization, but we are also an electrotechnical charity. So we invest quite a lot of things back into the industry, things like uh, Skill Electric, um, Future Faraday's, and a, a, a number of innovations and, uh, and systems that we actually put back in for the good of the industry. NET are regulated by the Institute of Apprenticeships and Technical Education, IFAPE, and there is already a network of assessment centres currently licensed, which are independently quality assured for consistency and compliance. So we meet quite a lot of the endpoint assessment organisation requirements. Next slide, please. The new domestic electrician apprenticeship standard is separate from the current electrotechnical apprenticeship. So training providers will need to get in touch with NET in order to complete a separate contract. This will actually enable those training providers to uh, upload gateways to NET for bookings within a center of their choice. Uh, and it will operate very, very similar to the way that we operate the uh, AM2S at the moment. The gateway requirements, as uh, Kevin uh, stated earlier on, are taken from the assessment plan. So the qualification electrotechnical in dwellings is required, maths and English at level two or equivalent, and there is also an NET readiness checklist, and these will be available from the NET website. So basically what you need to ensure is that after all the training has been done, there's a six month gap where you could then apply for your booking of your uh, assessment. And this is where you need to ensure that those learners are, are up to speed with, with the assessments. And from our readiness checklist, what you can see is the areas that will be covered in the endpoint assessment. This checklist, of course, must be signed by all parties. It must be signed by the candidate, it must be signed by the employer, and it also must be signed by the training provider. This is to ensure that all parties are ready for the endpoint assessment. Next slide, please. So what is going to be in the assessment? The first thing that you'll notice is that uh, the length, and that is basically because of the variety of circuits and different options that a domestic electrician may encounter has actually made the assessment process that little bit longer than the current AM2. The endpoint assessment will actually be graded. So there will be a fail, pass or distinction. The endpoint assessment there has three basic assessment methods. There will be an observation of practical competence. There will be something a little bit new that you may not have come across before, and that is a scenario based interview. And there is also an online knowledge assessment. The, the rationale behind a scenario based interview is that previously in the electrotechnical qualification, behaviours were incorporated into the qualification. However, the IFA template uh, has to really bring those behaviours out separately, which um, uh, they've got to be shown to be assessed independently from other means. So what we've done is we've created a, a, a method of assessing those within the endpoint assessment. Next slide, please. So the first assessment method is observation by the assessor and will be a single phase installation where circuits for smart technologies, safety circuits, renewable energy and EV charging and other circuits that are normally found within a domestic environment. The testing will cover the whole installation, whole installation and associated circuits and these will be conducted in line with the current Guidance Note 3 and on-site guide. The results and verification of values taken will be uploaded onto an electronic test certificate system. So uh, as a little change from where we are at the moment where the test forms are handwritten, uh, what we'll find is that within this is that new technologies will take over and they will use some form of 
uh, uh, app or, or or system where they will actually note into the uh, iPad or uh, tablet or, or or laptop uh, their results from their um, from their testing. This this is really just because in a lot of cases most electricians these days use some form of technology in recording the results. You'll also notice there that is included within the endpoint ass assessment is condition reporting, where the apprentice will identify various anomalies and conditions, which will then be coded correctly and appear on a condition report. This was at the request of the, the employer group uh, to include condition reporting as part of the overall testing procedure. Next slide, please. Like I've just said, the recording of the test results will be, uh, it will involve the use of a digital electrical installation and condition report document. And uh, in the near future, when this is ready, there will be a sample of this uh, via our website where people will actually be able to see the sort of system that we are actually going to be using. The scenario based interview will require the apprentice to, uh, to answer some questions of typical real life situations in order to meet the behavioural requirements of the assessments, like I said earlier. Now, for these questions, uh, it takes about 90 minutes uh, in the assessment plan to cover this area. So there will be 12 questions that the candidate will have to answer. Now, within that, uh, these are going to be totally randomised. So the assessor of the day will have these actually pop up onto the system and will have no preconception really of what's going to be asked. Uh, neither will the, the apprentice until on the actual endpoint assessment date. The online examination will be 40 questions open book and will cover BS7671 and more importantly, the electrician's guide to the building regulations. So the, the examination that we currently have is really sort of like biased towards BS7671. This new one will actually have a, a, an e equal smattering of health and safety building regulations questions and BS7671. So the actual practical installation will be graded as fail or pass, uh, but the overall assessment will be graded fail, pass or distinction with the results of the uh, scenario interview and the online examination contributing to the overall grade. Next slide, please. Uh, it's basically important from a, a training provider's perspective that they maintain the current state of employment and training status on their individual a a M a MIS systems. This is basically because uh, NET apply for the apprenticeship certificate and if those details are not correct or current then it means that the uh, ESFA reject the application we then have to go back to the training provider and ask to see whether those details for that particular candidate are current which gives a lot of dis delays so basically it's, it's really important that all training providers ensure that the current state of their apprentices are up to date on the colleges or training providers systems. So when we apply for this uh, uh, apprenticeship certificate after they have successfully completed uh, the AM2D, you will notice that the certificate is sent by the apprenticeship service to the employer. Uh, again, NET have no control over this. Uh, we just apply, it then automatically gets sent to the employer. It doesn't go to the apprentice. The only time that it would go to the apprentice is if the apprentice has been made redundant uh, and they are not employed at that point in time. The, th the other most important thing is that apprentices that resign from an employer will not receive an apprenticeship certificate. So from our perspective, uh, if, if we know that a uh, an apprentice is no longer with a current employer uh, or gone self-employed or, or done or just decided not to uh, continue, then we need to know that information because otherwise it takes us uh, a lot of time and effort to apply for a certificate just to get sent back to say that they're not on the system. Next slide, please. So from that perspective, uh, what we've got there is um, we are currently developing materials uh, to uh, assist with this particular apprenticeship standard. 
We've got, uh, we're looking at the, the possibility of a bridging assessment because we appreciate that apprentices that go through the domestic electrician route may suddenly want to change over to do commercial and industrial at a later stage in their careers. So from uh, uh, an NET point of view, we will be developing uh, some uh, short assessments that will take will credit what they've already achieved by the AM2D, but there'll be some additional work uh, regarding machines and three phase that they'll then move across uh, to the full electrotechnical uh, uh, qualification and assessment. Um, like I said earlier, we are looking at experienced worker routes, uh, which are under development. But again, this is going to take a, a period of time because at present, as uh, most people are aware, there are a number of different ways uh, that domestic electricians uh, are working and have been uh, certificated or approved at this moment in time. So again, making sure that we've got all that correct information before we actually launch that, um, it, it, you know, work is still continuing and we're involving the employer groups with that. As we've done before, uh, NET will be developing support materials uh, for the assessment. The checklist will be a, a good means of actually seeing what competencies uh, needed to be uh, trained, ready for the endpoint assessment. And uh, like our inspection and testing app, and other top tips that are available on the website, we will also have those uh, there in the near future to support the apprenticeship standard for domestic electrician. I think that's my last slide. <laughs> oh, and I'll hand you back to Kevin. Thank you, Bill. That was absolutely brilliant. Really interesting. Um, so that concludes the, um, the the presentation part. So we're now just going to move on to uh, questions. So I'm just looking at uh, question the, the questions and answers. Um, oh, we do have one uh, question here, and I'll read it out. In regards to the uh, science and principles unit 08, pass is graded pass merit and distinction, there or then pass only. Will there be a set maximum number of attempts? So this is obviously related to the qualification. Will there be a set maximum number of attempts? Reason being is that many centers have a high reset rates. Um, okay, so it's mainly down to learners not um, uptake an additional revision study. Um, yeah, I think this particular area, um, currently it will be part the graded pass merit or distinction or fail on the first attempt only. So this is the online exam for science and principles and the center marked written paper. So that brings it into line with the current level three electric technical qualification. Um, I think during development of this domestic electrician qualification, it was, it was felt having that similar approach would make it easier uh, to understand for employers and learners and centers and, and all also provide a sort of um, similar output. Um, so hopefully I think that um, we haven't had negative feedback about that within the uh, current level three Electrotech, but if you have any further thoughts, uh, please let me know. But this was one of the aspects the uh, employers um, uh, wanted to embed within the qualification. Um, so Bill, I've got a question for you here. Um, it says, why fail, pass and distinction? Um, many centres, why not middle ground of merit? So in relation to the EPA grading. Yeah, this was come down from the employer group. Um, they felt that uh, it, it would basically that um, and anybody that's doing an installation really is competent or not competent. Uh, or somebody can do it really well. You know, you can see on social media, sort of like um, many many pictures of, of really good work. So it was felt that they're either really good or they're competent, hence why it's just distinction and pass. They didn't think that there was a need for a, 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 a middle ground merit, if you like, or credit. Yeah, yeah. And I think I've seen that uh, grading model used in, uh, I think I'm right in saying other EPAs or, or certainly with the other assessments where it's difficult yes. to define what, what the merit is. It's, it's easier to, have that past distinction 
Yeah, it, it, it is. It's, it's just very awkward to have that little bit, of, bit in the middle, so to speak, really. You know, they're, they're either competent, which we consider as the past. Yeah. Uh, or they're, they're really, uh, you know, really good at it. So and again, the only areas that we can actually uh, get that is from the scenario based questions uh, or, or the examination. Excellent. Thank you, Bill. So, yeah, I think a question for me here, um, it says, how should we manage groups of learners on the existing 7345? So this is the electrotech, electrotech qualification apprenticeship and this new uh, DE qualification. Um, well, I think in that case, look for, reflect on the units I presented today and look where the units have similar content. So. If you look at the EAL numbering, um, I've aligned them so the numbering is the same. Uh, so unit one will cover health and safety. Uh, unit eight is science and principles. So those core principles are generally always the same for a domestic electrician or a full scope electrician. Um, but the full scope electrician will take further time covering content such as motors and free phase installations, for example. Um, but there are more similarities than differences. Also, um, uh, you know, depending on the ratio of learners, you could, for example, rotate, you know, if you've got learners in the workshop, so, you, so maybe when your domestic electricians are in the workshop, you know, they're together studying in a class, you could put one, uh, you know, set of learners in the workshop, and then maybe the, the, the full scope electricians could do some additional theory study and vice versa. Um, and, and maybe even try to integrate theory into workshop time as well. So each type of you know, apprentice can have a more tailored learning approach. Um, because I do think, and, and I'm sure people listening, even apprentices covering the same discipline will, will also have uh, different learning needs. But I'd be interested to hear back um, on anyone's views on, on how they um, uh, intend to approach this. So, um, this is another question. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you, Bill, first. Um, do you think this would be a popular apprenticeship uh, and qualification? What's your view, sir, Bill? Well, the, the first thing is that there is a significant uh, employer group, which is different from the electrotechnical employer group, uh, that have requested this as uh, a large proportion of their business is within the domestic sector. Um, from our experience within NET, we're also quite finding uh, a, a fair proportion of learners that uh, suddenly come across containment and have great difficulty in that area. Uh, and when questioned, uh, we, we find out that he said, well, a majority of the work that I do is, uh, is domestic and uh, we don't normally put in uh, steel conduit or cable tray or things like that you know it's a it's a bit of a rarity for the for the amount of work they do so uh, again i think at this point in time it's a bit of an unknown quantity but uh, i think if if there are contractors out there that are purely doing domestic then um, this will be the route to go because it is basically going to be uh, uh, you, know, you know aligned to the their day-to-day -day business Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm thinking also, Bill, as, as the uh, full electrotech is reviewed, that, that they may be more inclined for, you know, non-domestic locations. Therefore, you know, potentially by default, the, the, the domestic apprentices will naturally fall into this qualification. So, yeah, I, I, um, like, like you said, I, I'm sure that uh, uh, when the electrotechnical review is, is, is done and discussed, I'm sure that come, coming out of that, they'll say, well, there is a domestic electrician route now. Um, yes. So I think the electrotechnical may change in its format to, to what we've got at the moment. Uh, because uh, as we said, you know, in the past that the electrotechnical qualification is uh, you know, one suit that fits all. Um, so, you know, who knows, there, there could be a, a slight change with a review. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, I've got another question here. Um, will this qual be pushed by industry agencies uh, go the same route as commercial gold card where you can't work without it on most sites? I'm not sure if I can answer that. I don't know if you have a view on that, Bill, whether I think what it's asking if, um, if someone has a gold card or 
through, through obtaining this apprenticeship, that they'll, they'll be barred from commercial industrial building sites? Um, again, it's an unknown quantity at this point in time. All I can say is that uh, any uh, apprentice going through this route uh, will be able to apply for a domestic electrician uh, gold ECS card uh, when they've successfully completed. Uh, and it's also aligned to uh, the IET for a T-ENG. So as a, as a qualified apprentice, they'll be also be able to, uh, uh, to apply for those. Uh, with respect to uh, domestic electricians working on commercial sites, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's probably down to insurance purposes. Uh, yeah. And uh, who knows, you, you could have two teams of electricians. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as going back to your presentation, you, you're going to, we're going to be looking at topping up to, to the full Electrotech. So, you know, we do, the industry does want competent people in the right setting, don't, don't they? So uh, yep. you know, that's an important thing. So we'll wait and see what happens on that. Um, another question here, as this is for single phase, will there be an extra module for free phase when installed into new builds to cope with EV charging? Yeah, this, this did actually get discussed in the development. I think one of the main key demarcations was single phase, free phase, but you know, it, is, we, it was discussed that uh, there are new dwellings with three phase uh, for, for the electric vehicle charging. Um, I think that in the immediate response, we do have EV charging uh, CPD qualification. Um, so I think uh, immediately that will bridge the gap um, um, you know, for the single phase to free phase. And certainly also the industry is looking at mandated technical competencies around the installation of electric vehicle charging points. So I, I think as an interim answer, the, the extra module would, would actually be the um, electric vehicle charging CPD award. Yeah, um, just to help you on that one as well is that uh, although that may well be three phase coming into uh, to, to the premises, all the circuits will all be single phase. So after the after the consumer unit, basically all the circuits, the, the domestic uh, electrician that will be working will be all single phase. Absolutely. So they would they would have an appreciation of three phase within the qualification. Uh, and just but again, if, if you've got the EV charging point on one phase and the rest of the builds on the other phase, um, you know, the, the circuits that they will actually physically be installing will be from a point of view of single phase, whereas the three phase may be coming in, but there'll be separate cutouts uh, for, from, a, from a three phase perspective. So they'll still be working on single phase. Excellent. Thank you, Bill, for explaining that. And um, we do have uh, another comment or question. Um, developing this for experienced worker in the future would be great as it mitigates the needs, the need for free phase, uh, for free phase. So I, th I think it's just a comment saying, how, you know, having this an experienced worker version of, of this qualification would, would be an excellent thing. So, yes, as, as you said, Bill, that's something we're, we're looking at or the industry is looking at. Yeah, and, um, it's, it's quite a slippery fish, if you like, to actually pin down, um, because, again, there are so many people that are, are working in a domestic scenario that have got a variety of short course and uh, full, full technical uh, certificates uh, in a mix and match, uh, you know, and basically are working their way through a competent person scheme. So actually uh, working out the rationale as to what you're going to put together uh, as, as a basis for an experienced worker uh, and making sure that the uh, employer group and the industry that looks after this are, are happy with it, it is quite a, quite a task. So, mm -hmm. so from that perspective, don't, don't be surprised if it takes a little time before that <laughs> actually that comes out. Absolutely, absolutely. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Bill. I think that's... Um... The last of our questions. Well, if you if you do think of anything else, um, and anyone today who joined, you think of anything else, so uh, you know, so email them. I should have put my email address on here, but please um, pop along to product query. Um, they'll, they'll bring their way to me, or any uh, general inquiries. Um, got customer experience email address as well, the VAL. Um, and um, that concludes our presentation today.
Um, thank you for taking the time uh, to join. We greatly appreciate that. Any other additional feedback, again, let us know. And um, have a great rest of the afternoon. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.